Hello, Mrs. H here. These foods are rich in carbohydrates, meaning they contain starches and sugars. When we eat these foods, our enzymes speed up the breakdown and conversion of these carbohydrates into simple sugars, such as glucose, which can be absorbed from the small intestine and into the blood. We need glucose for respiration to release energy to our cells. So if the glucose concentration in the blood is too low, we will not be able to get enough glucose to our cells for respiration. If our blood glucose concentration is too high, then one of the problem is that water will move out of the cells by osmosis, leading to us becoming dehydrated and worse. So this could be quite dangerous. So it is very important to balance the blood glucose concentration. The organ that detects if blood glucose concentration is too high or low is the pancreas. We know the pancreas is also important in making digestive enzymes, but we're going to concentrate on its function as an endocrine gland secreting hormones. If the blood glucose concentration is too high, this will be detected by the pancreas and it will secrete insulin into the blood. If the blood glucose is too low, the pancreas will secrete glucagon into the blood. So let's have a look how this works. Here we can see a capillary carrying blood with a high concentration of glucose and insulin that has been secreted by the pancreas. The liver and the muscle cells have receptors for insulin. When insulin attaches to the receptors on the muscle cell, this enables glucose to diffuse easily into the muscle cell. Some of the glucose will be used in respiration to release energy, and insulin also enables excess glucose to be stored as glycogen. So this helps to reduce the concentration of glucose that is in the blood by storing it away as glycogen. Insulin also attaches to receptors on the liver cells. Glucose will diffuse into the liver cell and some of the glucose will be used in respiration and the excess glucose will be converted to glycogen. Glycogen consists of lots of glucose molecules bonded together. Glycogen can be converted back to glucose and in muscle cells that glucose is used in respiration. When the blood glucose concentration falls below normal levels, the pancreas secretes a hormone called glucagon. The liver cells have glucagon receptors as well as insulin receptors. When glucagon binds to the liver cell, it causes glycogen to be converted back into glucose and then that glucose can diffuse back into the blood to increase the glucose concentration back to normal again. This can be summarized in the flow chart here. And if you would like a copy of this flow chart, then click on the link in the description. So here you can see the normal glucose concentration in the blood. When there is an increase in glucose concentration of the blood, the pancreas detects this and secretes insulin into the blood. Insulin makes the membranes of the liver and muscle cells more permeable to glucose. This causes the liver and muscle cells to take in more glucose. In other words, increase glucose uptake. Glucose can be used in respiration and the excess glucose can be converted to glycogen. The glucose concentration in the blood will decrease and it will return back to normal or its optimum. If there's a decrease in the glucose concentration of the blood, the pancreas detects this and secretes glucagon into the blood. Glucagon targets the cell membranes of the liver cells only. This causes the liver cells to take in less glucose, so a decreased glucose uptake, and glycogen is converted back to glucose and it will diffuse back into the blood. And that means the glucose concentration in the blood will increase back to normal. The control of blood glucose concentration is an example of homeostasis and homeostasis is the maintenance of a constant internal environment, in this case glucose concentration in the blood, despite changes in the external and internal factors. I've put brackets around external changes because for glucose control it's only the internal changes of blood glucose concentration that have an effect here. If we were talking about homeostasis of body temperature for example then the external temperatures obviously will have an effect. In order to maintain homeostasis any change away from normal or optimum conditions must be reversed or returned back to the optimum. 
bringing conditions back towards the optimum is called negative feedback. And one last thing before we finish. If somebody produces no insulin, then they are unable to lower their blood glucose concentration and get sufficient glucose into their cells. This person has type 1 diabetes. If a person can produce insulin, but their cells can't respond to that insulin, then this is type 2 diabetes. There are obviously more details you need to know about diabetes, but that's for a different video. Don't forget to click on the link if you want to download a copy of the flowchart. And thanks for watching. If you found this useful, please give it a like and subscribe to keep up to date with new content.